everybody. Nice to have you back to the channel. We've got some pretty exciting news. Yeah, we got asked by the Metropolitan Baltimore Fire Emerald Society if we would donate a project to their silent auction. They are doing a charitable auction for first responder families and being a first responder, um, we were totally all in on this project. Um, what made it even better is we had a guest maker with us. Yes. Yeah, yes, we did. We had yes. my daughter, Samantha, who is also a first responder, a volunteer EMT. She came out and gave us a hand. So we're going to show you how we made our version of the thin, thin red, red line light. flag. It's going to be awesome. Let's get started. For these projects, you have a lot of choice for materials, and some people will use MDF, and that's perfectly acceptable for this project. For us, since we were donating it to charity, we wanted to upscale it a little bit, and we went with solid hardwood. Went to the big box store, bought some dimensional poplar, brought it back to the shop. We rough measured the length necessary for the project, and then we marked the lumber. Took it over the chop saw. When doing a project like this, when you're gluing up panels, you always want to go about an inch wider than is necessary. Whenever you're gluing up a panel, things tend to shift no matter how hard you try and you're glue up and you want to leave that extra length. We did that with this project. The final dimension on this project is going to be 37 inches, so we cut it at 38 inches. Before we went over to the joiner and started making our panel, I spent a lot of time looking at the grain direction to see exactly what it's going to look like. I mean, yeah, it is the back, but you still want it to be pretty. Once I had that marked up, I took the pieces over to our joiner and I made sure to join all the edges so that when I did the glue up, there was zero chance for you being able to tell that this was an actual glued up panel. When it ran it through the joiner on both sides, one or two passes is all it took. And then I was ready to head on over and glue up and clamp the panel. Choice for glue on this one was Type Bond 3. You can use any wood glue you want, but for us, we just have a plethora, yes, I said plethora, of Type Bond 3 floating around the shop, so that's what we have, that's what we used. Make sure to put glue on both edges using a glue brush to smooth everything out. And then went ahead and laid everything using the marks that I used before joining as my lineup. Using the witness lines from the previous step, I made sure everything was nice and centered the way I want to be. Remember, this thing's an inch long, so it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, but we lined it up using the witness lines, and then we started applying clamps. Went ahead and put three clamps on the top, followed by calls, and the calls keep everything flat on the edges. Then went ahead and flipped it over, and that's an important discussion because we created our own version of the game Perfection. If that cultural reference does not work for you, maybe you should Google it. But we went ahead and we put the calls on there to keep things flat. Then we flipped the project over, put two more clamps on the back side of the project. That's to try and keep wood movement at a minimum. Remember, when you're clamping things, though, you only want to put enough pressure to allow glue squeeze out. Once we had that glue squeeze out, everything was clamped up the way we wanted it. We took a wet rag, we wiped down the glue squeeze out, even used the back side of the glue brush, which has a little bit of scraper. It's not really necessary at this point. We are going to be painting this later. If you, we were going to be staining it, we would take a different direction. We would wash it off, but we'd put a lot more effort into making sure that glue is gone. Since this is going to be painted, we didn't necessarily spend an exuberant amount of time doing that. Then we set aside the panel for 24 hours and we let it set up. After letting the project set up for 24 hours, brought it back to the table, removed the clamps, and remember, we didn't remove all the glue, so there was some squeeze out. So we took the project over to the drum sander. We had 80 grit in the drum sander, and we ended up running, I think, about six passes per side. That didn't really affect the thickness, but kept running it through the drum sander till all the glue squeeze out was gone, and any wood movement, because there was a little bit of swelling that went on, any of that movement that happened got taken care of by the drum sander. Once we got it flat on the drum sander at that 80 grit, took it over the table saw and nipped one edge so I was confident I would have a parallel edge to go against and did the final width at 19 and a half inches. When that was done, I pulled out my crosscut sled with the same scenario. I took off one small nip on one side, just a blade width, and then cut it to its final overall width 
or length, if you will, of 37 inches wide. That makes this a regulation flag and to scale, so nothing's going to look off. When that was done, it was time to do final sanding. I went through all the grits, went from 80 up to 120, 150, and took it all the way up to 220. You don't necessarily need to take it to 220 because we're going to be painting it. I just kind of wanted to do that. Use the random orbit sander. I rounded off all the edges. Again, you can do that by hand as well with a regular sanding block, or you can even run it with a trim router if you want. Once everything was sanded to 220, we took it back over to the bench and we grabbed some black paint primer. Any primer is going to do, you can get it at your big box store, and we just used a foam roller to roll it on there. And what that does is that acts as, number one, a sealer of the wood because we are using epoxy, but at the same time, it gets added depth. We are going to be coloring the epoxy, but we wanted that black background to almost be like a black canvas for us to start on. For this project, we're using Stone Coat Countertops Art Coat Epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one mix. What we like about it is it's got proper UV protection. While this is an interior project, a little UV protection isn't going to hurt. We're using dark red metallic. We're using yellow gold metallic and black metallic as our dye choices. The most exciting part of this project was my daughter, Samantha, who is a accomplished DMT in her own right. She came in for the artistic side of things, as we said in the beginning, and this was kind of her training into the resin world and really excited to have her in the shop. She mixed it on a one-to-one -one ratio, and we did it at three ounces per square foot, which meant that based on this, it was roughly 18 to 20 ounces. We made sure to mix parts A and B very, very well, a minimum of two minutes. I think we went a total of four minutes. We hand mixed it. You can drill mix this using a paddle drill, but we didn't want to introduce too much air. We went ahead and we mixed it, and then we started dividing it into the separate cups that we were gonna use for the project. The goal was to kind of make this look like the flag was on fire, thus the color choices that we had. We broke it out into three separate cups. Obviously black as being the primary color had the majority of the resin that we were gonna be working with. And then we had a small amount for yellow and a small amount of red. Since the product was already mixed, all we had to make sure is that we were breaking down the mica powder so that there was no clumps left. So we just hand stirred that for 30, 45 seconds, making sure that everything was mixed properly. Then the fun starts. And when I say it that way, I really mean it. This is where the artist in you really can come out because there's really no wrong way to do this. Once we were fully satisfied with the color and the way we mixed it, we just went ahead and poured it out. Using an eighth inch trowel, we troweled the product all the way across the board, smoothing, starting in the center and going to the outside. I honestly love those trowel marks. It's just so satisfying to watch. Once we got it to the outside, we let it naturally flow over the edges, and then we used a gloved hand, and we messed everything up. You can use a basting brush for this or a chop brush. This isn't a very big project, so we just used our hands, and we made sure to cover the edges and the outside with as much black resin as we could get. Once it was fully laid out, we then took a heat gun and we removed all the bubbles. This is pass number one, because you're going to do at least three passes with the torch or a heat gun to remove bubbles. Once we used our hands to remove the trowel lines and give it that final mixing and stir up the metallic mica powder, we went ahead and it was time to start laying in the red and yellow lines. There is no wrong way to do this. So Karen and Samantha grabbed some craft sticks and they grabbed the red and yellow cups and they just started tracing out lines. At first we were saying, oh, we need some here, we need some there, we wanted to make it look balanced and after a while we're like, you know what, screw it. Let's just put it everywhere. The goal for this would actually try and make it look like fractured granite. You see me standing there with my hands in my pocket because they don't ever let me touch the artsy stuff. But once we had the lines laid out and we had them highlighted the way we were we wanted, we would then go back with the heat gun and we used the heat gun to actually meld that red and yellow together almost to create a flame-like effect and mix things throughout. And again, there's no wrong way to do this. The only wrong way to do this is to overdo it. So be a little cautious, be a little conservative, but again, just be you. Bring out that artist in you and do it. Afterwards, and we had everything the way we wanted it, we then used the heat gun to make sure we got rid of all the bubbles. It's a total of three passes with a heat gun at 15 minutes. 
one at 45 minutes and one at an hour, and then all the bubbles should be out of your mixture. And then we left it for the required 72 hours where the flag set and the resin fully cured. After the resin cured for 72 hours, I took a sanding block with 220 grit sandpaper. Basically what we wanna do is we wanna create a mechanical bond for the spray paint and the resin going forward. Just light passing, we knock down some of the little nubs, little of those dust bunnies that get in the resin. Don't really go hard here, but just make sure that you're careful on those edges. You don't wanna eat through the resin that's actually on the round over. After that, we came in with some denatured alcohol on a rag and we just wiped it down. We basically wanted to make sure that we were getting all the dust off. Next came up was union placement. And I have to be honest, it took us so long to decide which side the union was supposed to go on. Then it was time to lay out the stripes and it took us three to four different tries till we finally came up with the idea of marking the spacing with an X-Acto knife. And then we were able to pull painter's tape based on the marks. These stripes are actually one and a half inches thick and we laid them all out. Now the eagle-eyed people will see we made a mistake there with the union which required us to redo the flag. We'll discuss that later. But since we thought we were doing it right, we grabbed a can of just standard Rust-Oleum metallic silver paint and we dusted. I think it took us about five coats to do the whole thing. We just kept doing light sprays coat over coat and we let it set up and dry about five minutes between each coat until we were absolutely sure that we got proper coverage. Again, this is an artistic thing. You can decide exactly how much silver you want to show. Do you want to be translucent? Do you want to be fully opaque? Do you want something in the middle? There's really no wrong answer when it comes to this. For us, though, we wanted to go as opaque as possible, maybe with a little hint of the black coming through, but again, let your inner artist speak to you. And the reveal. We went ahead and we pulled the tape off after we let the paint set up for about 30 minutes and talk about super excited. Uh, with a little trepidation because we weren't sure that we weren't gonna peel paint off with it, but as the stripe started coming off and the union came off and we saw this perfectly amazing, perfect straight lines, not gonna lie, we may have done a little bit of a happy dance. Next up was sealing the spray paint stars and stripes into the flag and the entire design. For that, we used Art Coat. Again, we used three ounces per square foot. 18 to 20 ounces, but instead of using the trowel this time, we used a foam roller to just kind of move things around. We certainly did not want to take a trowel, an eighth inch trowel, and mark up that spray paint. So we just dragged everything around, starting in the middle and working ourselves to the outside and just let it naturally go. And once we were done spreading everything, we went back to a heat gun or a torch to get that nice gloss finish. Same thing, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or 15, 45 in an hour. Just make sure that you're steering clear of the resin. You don't want to overheat the spray paint. Trust us on this. You, we, you know what? That's just a story for a different day. To get the drips off the bomb, it's pretty simple. Grab your random orbit sander, some 60 or 40 grit, and go back and forth. Light passes at first, working until you get all of the resin off then working yourself up back to 150 grit. After that, it's just the, your finish of choice. We went ahead with polycrylic. It's easy, there's zero VOC. It's just a polyurethane. We just wanna make sure you have to seal the bottom. That is a requirement because if you don't seal the bottom, then the flag could actually cup on you. Once the polyurethane actually set up, we decided to go with a French cleat. French cleat for something of this weight is a really simple thing to do, and you know you can keep it level. Grab some poplar, cut it at a 45 degree angle, and then made sure painstakingly that it was one inch off of the top on either side, and then grabbed my brad nailer using some brad nails and went ahead and nailed it in place using five eighths inch brads. You'll notice I go back and forth at almost like a 25 to 40 degree angle. That helps lock it in place, almost like a clamp. When all said and done, it's the glue that's holding this French cleat on. I'm using the brads as just an extra safety factor. And again, frankly, as a clamp. Once I was done with the brads, I wiped the glue off and she's good to go. And we could not be happier with how this turned out. In the beginning, we started this project thinking that we were gonna do a thin red line flag and try and marbleize it. And as the art started to speak to us and the resin was speaking to us, between using the heat gun to move things around and a little bit of gravity by tilting, it started looking like it was actually on fire. And that just spoke to us and we went with it. And we are so, so happy with the way this came out. Let's talk about where we messed up. 
um, so you don't make the same mistakes. Um, MDF versus hardwood. Um, MDF by nature does not trap air, it does trap water, so don't use it in a wet place, but it does not trap air. So we, we should have done multiple seal coats um, before we did that final big pour because yeah. we made the first one. And bubbles. And bubbles were a problem. Yeah. Made a second one and I caught it on fire, <laughs> uh, right? And the third one, we, I was like, oh yeah, I, I'm a resin guy, I should know this. We should be doing seal coats. We did seal coats and fine. Uh, Karen talked about it earlier, the stars upside down, I, I'll take the hit for that. Um, I was standing opposite the table from you and Samantha, yeah. and they were upright for me. But for the whole flag, they were not. They, they were not, so. they, no, they were not upright at all. So, uh, and I'm glad that we did at least catch that. Yeah. So. The part we didn't catch was the um, slight jog in the stripe, which artistically looks fantastic, but it's not a regulation flag. And these needed to be regulation. And we wanted it to be regulation. So um, it's gonna do a proud, it's gonna hang here next to our other art piece and hang out in the gallery here. Um, I mean, hey, I got to make a project with my daughter. I'm not gonna just give it, I mean, we were gonna give it away, right? But no. now we're not, it's not going anywhere. It's gonna hang here in perpetuity. Um, Probably next to his fireman hat and, and the jacket and everything. Yeah, and so. stuff like that. So um, stripe alignment was a big deal. Um, that took some measurement. That took, that took a lot some of measurement, measurement. And it took a lot of uh, work with the tape. I would not recommend working with painter's tape with this again. It, it would move too much when you're trying to, to do it. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're thinking a Cricut or some vinyl that's one, or if we can find tape that's inch and a half, but honestly, vinyl may be the best way to go because it did leave, the painter's tape did leave a little bit of residue on the resin. Yeah. It's not causing a problem, but... You still don't want the sticky on there and have to have another step. Right, exactly. It's just as another step. And last but not least, over torching. I cannot begin to express... He's a pyromaniac. It's okay. <laughs> <Night. laughs> I cannot begin to express how horrifying it is when your whole project just goes poof. Um, so we caught, I, I caught, <laughs> yeah. He does this, you should see our floor. It looks fantastic yeah, yeah. on the floor. You are, you, you Was know, not pretty for the, the, the flag. Yeah, so the whole one side of the flag caught on fire and that- I'm so glad I wasn't here for it. Yeah, you weren't here for that. Oh. Um, we'll figure out what to do with that one later. But. <laughs> All in all, we're really thrilled with this project, how it came out, really happy with it. Yeah. Um, it hit all the buttons we were trying to hit. Um, we wanted to create an artistic piece as a thin red line flag that was different than just a thin red line. And we think we did that. So you're gonna have to tell us what you think. Make sure you like, subscribe, maybe comment, share the video. Oh yeah. Let, let, it, let us know what you think. You can find us at scottatthecraftywiener.com via email, karen at thecraftywiener.com for email or at thecraftyweiner.com on the web. So yeah. until next time, get in your shop, build beautiful things, and we are going to see you on the next video. All Have right. a good one. Take it easy.